this video will explain what pH means and how it's related to acidity. It will also explain how indicators can be used to estimate the pH of the solution. At this point, you should be familiar with the general properties of acids and bases. If not, make sure you review them at this time. Now we'll see what the general pH ranges are for acidic, basic, and neutral solutions. The degree of acidity, or how acidic a solution is, is often represented by a quantity called pH. Notice that pH is a small p and a capital H, and pH is just a number. There's no unit for it. You should know what the general range in pH is for acidic solutions, basic solutions, and neutral solutions. The pH scale diagram in the Science 10 data booklet will help you with this. Here's the scale. Let's have a look at the information in this scale. First of all, it tells us that a neutral solution has a pH of 7. It also tells us that a basic solution has a pH greater than 7. Also, we see that the higher the pH is above 7, the more basic a solution is. For example, pH 8 is slightly basic, while pH 14 is very basic. Similarly, the lower the pH is below 7, the more acidic a solution is. For example, pH 6 is slightly acidic, while pH 0 is very acidic. The pH scale in the Science 10 data booklet gives the approximate pH of some common substances. When you're asked questions about the pH of a specific substance, don't forget to consult this table. You should also be able to give a rough estimate of the pH of these and similar common substances from memory. Also, it's good to know that the further away a substance is from a pH of 7, the more corrosive it is. For example, stomach acid, which is hydrochloric acid or HCl, has a pH of around 1 and is quite a corrosive acid. While oven cleaner, which is sodium hydroxide or NaOH, has a pH of around 13 and is quite a corrosive base. Substances with a pH close to 7 are non-corrosive. Now we'll take a closer look at pH and see what it means quantitatively. Like the Richter scale used for comparing strengths of earthquakes, the pH scale is called a logarithmic scale. All you are required to know about this here is that a change of one whole number in the pH value represents a tenfold change in the acidity. Remember, as the pH gets lower, the acidity gets higher, so a pH of 3 is more acidic than a pH of 4. Due to the nature of the pH scale, a solution with a pH of 3 is 10 times more acidic than a solution with a pH of 4. Similarly, a solution with a pH of 2 is 10 times more acidic than a solution with a pH of 3. So see if you can predict how many times more acidic a solution with a pH of 2 is than a solution with a pH of 4. We see that a solution with a pH of 2 is 10 times 10, or 100 times more acidic than a solution with a pH of 4. We can also look at this in terms of scientific notation. When a pH decreases by 2 units, the acidity increases by a factor of 10 squared, or 10 to the power 2. We can derive an equation to predict the change in acidity when the pH value changes. It is change in acidity is equal to 10 to the power of the change in pH. The triangle symbol stated as delta means change in. So delta pH means the change in the value of pH. Here's a question based on this equation. Comparing solutions with a pH of 9 and a pH of 3, it asks whether the pH 9 solution is more or less acidic than the pH 3 solution and how many more times acidic or less acidic it is. Read the question. Pause the video, try this question, then resume to check your answer. To use the equation to obtain the factor that the acidity changes by, we're just interested in the change in pH, not whether it's going up or down. So we just subtract the smaller pH from the larger pH. So delta pH equals 9 minus 3, which is equal to 6. So we'll use that in the equation. The change in acidity 
is equal to 10 to the power of delta pH, or change in pH, which is equal to 10 to the power 6, which also equals 1 million. So now we know the factor by which the acidity changes. It's 10 to the 6th, or 1 million. So now we must determine whether the solution of pH 9 is more acidic or less acidic than a solution of pH 3. Recall that the higher the pH of a solution, the less acidic it is. So as pH increases, a solution gets less acidic. So we can say that the solution with a pH of 9 is less acidic than the solution with a pH of 3. So we can summarize our answer as a solution with a pH of 9 is 10 to the 6 times less acidic than a solution with a pH of 3. Or, a solution with a pH of 9 is 1 million times less acidic than a solution with a pH of 3. Now we'll take a look at pH indicators and find out what they do and how we can use them. A pH indicator is a substance that changes color when a certain change in pH occurs. For example, litmus is a familiar indicator. Paper soaked in litmus is called litmus paper, and it's used to test substances to see if they're acidic, basic, or neutral. There are two main types of litmus paper, red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. Here is how the two types of litmus paper work. If you take a piece of red litmus paper and add it to an acid, it will stay red. But if you add it to a base, it'll turn blue. Now if you take a piece of blue litmus paper and add it to an acid, it will turn red. But if you add it to a base, it will stay blue. In another experiment, if you take a piece of red litmus paper and add it to neutral water, it will simply remain red. And if you take a piece of blue litmus paper and add it to neutral water, it will stay blue. So we can now conclude that adding either type of litmus paper to neutral water will not change its color. So now we can use the information we obtained. If we have an unknown solution and we want to find out whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral, we could dip red and blue litmus paper into it. And from the results and the information below, we could find out whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral. For example, we have a solution called unknown one, and we dip a piece of red litmus paper into it. The red litmus paper stays red, and now we dip a piece of blue litmus paper into it, and the blue litmus paper stays blue. Neither red nor blue litmus paper change color, so, is unknown number one acidic, basic, or neutral? Because neither the red nor blue litmus change color, we now know that unknown number one is neutral. Now we have another unknown solution which we'll call unknown two. We add a piece of red litmus paper to it, and the red litmus paper stays red. Next, we add a piece of blue litmus paper to it, and the blue litmus paper turns red. This would happen if unknown number two is acidic. As we just saw, litmus paper is handy for identifying solutions as either acidic, basic, or neutral. If we look on the indicator table in the Science 10 data booklet, we'll see how litmus works. Looking at a chart of the color of litmus paper at pH is from 0 to 14, we see that litmus changes color from red to blue at pH 7. So if the pH is below 7 and the solution is acidic, litmus is red. And if the pH is above 7 and the solution is basic, litmus is blue. But litmus paper isn't the only indicator. This table lists several indicators, and we can see that each indicator will change color at a different pH value. Instead of changing abruptly at a certain pH, indicators change color gradually over a range of pHs. For example, there is a slope line from pH 3.2 to 4.4 in this diagram for methyl orange. This means methyl orange gradually changes from red to yellow between pH 3.2 to 4.4. Between 3.2 and 4.4, this indicator is various shades of orange. Notice it's more of a reddish orange close to pH 3.2, and more of a yellowish orange closer to pH 4.4. But it's sufficient to know that anywhere between 3.2 and 4.4, the color would be called orange. 
Now looking at the indicator methyl red, we see it changes from red to yellow over a range of pHs from 4.8 to 6. Between 4.8 and 6, the color is various shades of orange. We can also see that the indicator bromothymol blue changes from yellow to blue over a range of pHs from 6 to 7.6. Between 6 and 7.6, it ranges from yellow-green to green to blue-green. Using this table, we can see what colors different indicators are at a given pH. For example, let's find the colors of all the indicators here at a pH of 2. If we draw a line through the chart at pH 2, we can see that at pH 2, methyl orange, methyl red, and litmus would be red. Bromothymol blue would be yellow. Phenolphthalein would be colorless, and indigo carmin would be blue. So this summarizes the colors of all the indicators at a pH of 2. Now let's find the colors of all these indicators at a pH of 11. If we draw a line through the chart at pH 11, we can see that at a pH of 11, methyl orange and methyl red would be yellow. Bromothymol blue, litmus, and indigo carmine would all be blue. And phenolphthalein would be pink. So this summarizes the colors of all the indicators at a pH of 11. Testing a solution with a number of different indicators will help us estimate its pH. Here's a common type of multiple choice question you might see regarding indicators. A solution is yellow and bromothymol blue yellow and methyl red, and blue and indigo carmin. Is the pH A4, B6, C7, or D8? The best way to approach this is to draw a vertical line through this chart at each pH value given in the choices in the question, and see which one matches the results. Here is the line at pH 4, at pH 6, at pH 7, and at pH 8. We can see that all three indicators are the given colors at a pH of 6. Bromothymol blue is yellow, methyl red is yellow, and indigo carmine is blue. So answer B is correct. The pH would be 6. Here's another multiple choice question. A solution is yellow in methyl orange, pink in phenolphthalein, and green in indigo carmine. Is the pH A 5, B 6.5, C 12.5, or D 14.0? Pause the video and try this question now on your own. Then resume to check your answer. Again, to answer this, we draw vertical lines through this chart at all the given pH values, 5, 6.5, 12.5, and 14. We can see that a pH of 12.5, methyl orange would be yellow, phenolphthalein would be pink, and indigo carmine would be close to an equal mixture of blue and yellow, which is green. So the answer would be C, the pH of this solution would be 12.5.